Hey everyone, I'm Stacy, the 911 Stitcher. Welcome to my channel about cross stitch and crafting. This is video number 94. This is actually a special tutorial video. Now, normally my regular YouTube videos are always about cross stitching. They're about crafting. I like to talk about crochet, punch needle, you name it. Any yarn or thread craft I like to talk about, but primarily every video I talk about some type of cross stitching. So in my videos, I've had some people write to me and ask, I've heard you mention the app GoodNotes in your videos. How do you use GoodNotes to cross stitch? How do you, how does it increase the speed of you stitching? And how do you save your progress through GoodNotes? What is the correlation here? What is, what do you use it for? So I'm going to do a quick tutorial on, if you have an iPad, on GoodNotes 5. So if you are like me, I'm a little afraid of computers. I am afraid it's gonna lose my progress. I'm afraid that I'm going to get all this this progress done on my chart, go in and lose it. So far I have just had, it is such an easy app to use. I have never had a problem with it losing any of my progress. So if you like paper charts and you typically are using a highlighter to mark your progress on a chart, Take a look at this video because this was really a game changer for me. It really increased my stitching time and I got a lot more done because I wasn't always searching for my highlighter. It never fails. It would roll into the back of the couch. It would roll into the crack of the couch. And then I, you have to pick it up, take the cap off, mark five little stitches that you just cross stitched. Forget it. Lean over, use the app and just mark it on your iPad. <laughs> So in my case, this is for iPad and it's called GoodNotes 5. I'm gonna show you a picture of it here. Now what I do is I will take a paper chart, I will take a photograph of it using my iPad, this is my little camera, and I'm gonna show you in just a few minutes step-by-step step, how I use it for cross-stitching. Now it saves your progress. You don't even have to press save. It literally saves the progress that you've stitched you could turn it off. You could you could accidentally have the power go out on it, go back in. It has saved your progress on your chart. So all you need is a chart. I am using my favorite, one of my favorite designers from the Heart Needle Art. She has a free chart called Love Mini Quaker that I stitched a couple of months back. This is what it looks like. And I thought I had my finish here. I do. This is my finish from this chart. It's adorable. I have not shown it yet on my regular floss tube. It'll be coming. So this is the free chart from the heartneedleart.com. Her name is Wendy. And she just, I, I stitched this on 56 count Cafe LA. And it just came out so adorable. So let's take this paper chart. I will show that again and explain all the details on that chart and that particular finish in my next floss tube, in my next YouTube video. So find any paper chart. It could be any paper chart that you have. If it's huge, you probably don't want to use this. What I do in that case, if it's a really big chart, I take it in pieces. So, I, and I'll explain it in a few minutes. So right now we're gonna start with a very small chart, Love Mini Quaker from the heartneedleart.com un located under free charts. So this is her chart. And instead of me using a highlighter and a pe or a pen to mark off every single little box that I stitch, I'm gonna show you how to use your iPad. So the first thing that you need to do is go to your app store and look for GoodNotes 5. I'm gonna show you your, the picture again here. And then once it's downloaded, you're basically going to find it on your iPad because it's going to show as a little tiny icon, just like this. And here it is right here, GoodNotes. So what do you do from then? If you've got your paper chart ready, and like I said, if it's really a big chart, I'll explain that at the end of the video. So take a look at, at my, the little tutorial I did that shows step-by-step step how I get this into my iPad. Okay, so now that I have my app ready, I've already got it on my iPad. I've got my paper chart ready that I wanna use, that I wanna stitch on. 
all I do is pull up good notes. I click on the box. Now, as you can see, here's all the projects I've already been working on. As you can see, I have a lot. <laughs> so this keeps track of every project you've taken a photograph of, or you've uploaded, scanned, whatever the way you wanna get your picture in here. I do it very, very basic. I literally take a photograph of my chart as I'm getting ready to make a new project. So here's all the, here's an idea of all the ones that I have saved using GoodNotes. And you can see I've got quite a bit, Did all kinds of different charts. And the highlight area is my progress. Okay, so what do you do if you've got a chart you don't have in here? How do you get it in? This is easy. All you do is, here's new. You click the box and it gives you all these options. It says, do you wanna bring a, uh, an image in that you have on your iPad already? Do you wanna take a photo? Do you wanna import? Do you wanna scan? I take the easiest route possible because I'm not a computer person. I take the easiest route possible and I take photo. So what that means is I am literally going to take a photo of this chart to work on it. I click take photo and it's a new project. So what I'm going to do, let's see if I could do it from this position. Let's bring the chart over and I'm gonna take a photo of it. Super easy, I'm gonna line it up as best I can, get all the graph in. Now I know you're kind of probably having a tough time seeing as I take the photo. You're just gonna use your iPad to take the photo. Let's see if I can get it back over here so you guys can see. Try and get your graft in, try and, now I'm gonna take it crooked. So that way you guys can see what to do if you mess up. So let's say I did it like this. Take the photo and look how it turned out. Oh, super crooked, I cut part of it off. They give you two choices, use the photo or retake. Let's retake it. <laughs> so we try it again, try and zoom out, try and eat, you know, get it even. Now this may be out of your, your um, vision right now, but I'm just basically pulling it back so that I've got a good picture of the chart. I'm gonna reach over and I'm going to take a snapshot. So it's not super, just for this video, it's not super, cause I'm at a weird angle. Normally I'll take it from right on top of the, without a shadow, you try and get the shadows out, it makes it a little bit less Confusing, if you've got a shadow on your chart, it's a little less uh, easier to read. So I've got a good picture of it. And say you still don't like it, it'll let you retake this photo as many times as you want. So let's try and go up a little bit more, try and get all the graph and snap the picture. That's a little more clear. I'm gonna use this photo. So it takes the picture and here's my photo. Now it's a little crooked because like I said, while I'm filming this, I'm at a weird angle. I'm gonna normally hold it right over my chart and take it so it's nice and even. But even still, this is gonna work just fine. So I've got the chart in and it's already in my, and saved as a new document. So even if I went backwards and I went and looked and to see where it is, there it is right here. You click it and it saves everything that you do want it. So say I wanna start stitching, make it bigger. You can actually enlarge it. So now you can really see the stitches. This is so fun because you can move it any way you want and you can see the, the color codes, you can see the graph really, really well. So this is your marking pen. This is your eraser. These are the two that I use the most. Say you accidentally are doing something and you go, oops, I just totally screwed up. Just go back. The back arrow here, go back. You might have to click it a couple times. There you go. And it disappears. So anything you do, you accidentally make this line, just go back and it easily gets rid of what you did. So you wanna start stitching. So say you've got this done here you can actually change the color. Right now it's pink, probably not gonna show up too well on this pink because this is a color chart. So you click the picture, I mean the, um, the color, you can change it. So let's do blue. 
let's do a dark blue. Okay, now you've got a, it changed up here to blue. You're ready to go. You can just tap out of it. So now it's blue, which might show up a little bit better for a color chart. I always prefer black and white charts because it's easier. So you probably, you might even be able to take a photocopy of this chart here and just make it black and white on a printer if you want to see. Because the if as long as there's a symbol on it, which looks... Yep, every color has a symbol. The symbol should pop out and give you a black and white chart. But this is just as fine. This is easy too. So now I've got blue. Say I stitch these three right here. All you do is mark. And you know that you've just finished those three. And you're ready to move on to here. So I'm stitching, stitching, stitching away. And I'm marking as I go. Marking. Marking. Just marking away on my thing. And like I said, I'm gonna stitch these. I've stitched all this already. I'm such a fast stitcher. <laughs> okay, so as I'm going, oh, the phone, I'm done stitching for the day. I've, I've gotta get going, blah, blah, blah. You don't even have to save it. You just hit this little back arrow here and your progress is saved. So now you can scroll, you can turn the computer off, you can charge it, do whatever you want. You come back the next day, you click it, and look at that, your, your progress is saved. This is so cool. So say for instance, oh my God, I'm off. I hate my thread color. I made a mistake. It could be whatever you want. Now you're gonna have to start all over again. Super easy because I'm gonna click the eraser here. This is the eraser. And I'm just going to go through and erase it. And look, it's back to being your graph. That is all I use. So you can tell there's no color here. That means you're still on the eraser. Click back to the pen. Now this means you can erase, I mean, uh, you can mark as thick as you want to with your pen. So I generally use the small one because, you know, it's a small little chart. So I can do like this. But say I already stitched all this and I forgot to mark it. I don't want to go through with this tiny little pen. Switch it to the big one and just get rid of it. <laughs> Look at all this progress I've stitched. So now, and you could also just go, you know, if you want to just go back to the small one, you can always just do just like this and make it a little bit neater. But that's just an example if you want to, you know, say you've been stitching and you've got pretty much all of this done. This is just a quick way to just make your pen larger so that you can just wipe out areas. I've already done all this. This whole graft is done. And, you know, and this is just an example. You can use a bigger pen to get more progress done. You don't have to sit here with a little tiny pen, you know, marking, marking, marking. You can just clear out a whole big area. And so say you went, oh no, that's the wrong icon. Go back to your eraser and click it and it's gone. So it's super easy. It's super friendly to use. You can increase, say you can't read something, you can increase it super large and it's just so cool. And again, the color is gone. So you know that you're on an eraser. Click back to the pen and now, oops, I made a mistake. You can just click the back arrow and that mistake is gone. So that's what I use. I love it because, see here, I've accidentally made some marks on my chart. I could easily, anytime you click the back arrow, it's going to delete the last couple things that you did. So say I don't want to go back 20 times to get rid of this, or if I've made marks here, just take your eraser and go over it. And they're gone. And then go back to your pen. And that's it. Here I like to stitch the love. Click your little thing. I've got these done, I've got these stitched, stitched, stitched. Oh, the phone ring, I, or, I, or I have to go. Click the back button, turn your thing off, and you know, you're back to the, the back to the beginning. So then, like I said, when you go back to start stitching, click the icon, and your progress is totally saved. Absolutely saved. I love this. I use this for every single paper chart. I do not use a paper chart and a highlighter anymore. I'm old fashioned. I love that. This is a game changer. If you have any questions, let me know. There's a lot of other features here that I never use. 
I mean, I can't even go over it because I can't, I just don't use it. I like basic and I like easy. So even if you had, say, a, black, a chart that had color, no matter what the color of the graft is, you can use a different color pen. You know, you can use red and click, just click out of it and start marking your chart with red instead of, you know, whatever you're going to see better. Sometimes these color charts are a little hard to see. So I'm just gonna go back. I don't want that marked after all. Go back, 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 and you're back to your back to your basics. So, and like I said, you could either you know completely wipe out a whole icon if you've stitched it already, or you can mark symbol by symbol, which is what I usually typically do. So, anyway, it's a super fun app. I enjoy it. I believe it's just a one-time payment. I don't know how much it is, but it certainly wasn't that much because I wouldn't have spent that much on it. But I use this every single day. And it's so much faster for me to just sit my iPad down and just lean over, make it as, what I love is how big you can make it. That's just, that is everything to me. And it's just so easy to just pick a new color and, you know, keep marking. That's a little light. I don't like that. So I'll go back, pick a new color. Let's do dark purple or dark blue. Click out of it. and just keep start marking as you're stitching. Lean over, mark it, and keep going. This has saved me, I've gotten a lot more progress on my uh, stitching because I don't have to reach over, grab my highlighter. Oops, I made a mistake, erase, and just go over it with your eraser. And it does not erase anything else. Pretty, pretty cool. So if you have any questions, let me know. But like I said, you can turn this off. There is no save feature. It saves on its own. You just click out of it and you're done and just turn it, turn the machine off and you're done. And that's it. So I hope that gives you a little bit better or a little bit easier of an idea of how to use the GoodNotes app. I showed just only a couple of features on GoodNotes. There are so many other features that I've not checked out yet. I just want to stitch and get going and get some good progress and get some finishes. And I, like I said, I'm so happy with this little finish that I did from that free chart that I just showed you. I think this little finish is just so cute. I'm going to show it better. Right now I have the lighting's a little weird in here uh, because I have it, the lighting centered towards the middle of the table that I'm sitting at. So it's a little hard to see if she put a little button and a bow and stuff, but you get the general idea of how you can turn your cross stitch into something really cute and have your iPad help you out with saving your progress and making it bigger, increasing the chart so you can see better, increasing, you know, so that you can see the, the symbols a little bit better. I, that's what I use it for. And then I mark as I go and it just, it just seems to go so much faster. Now, say you've got a huge chart like I do. I'm doing um, a year at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. I'll show you my progress on it. You can see the different boxes are a lot of stitching. So how did I use Good Notes on here? Let me see if I can pull it up real quick to show you. Now, obviously that's a huge, huge chart. What I've done, I might not, I may have already deleted it. What I did is I took a picture of it. Let's see uh, if it's sitting in my, no, I actually don't have it in here. What I did is I took a picture of just one single box. So you've got a year at Hawker and Hollow, I'm doing every month, January, February, March. As you can see in the picture I just showed, I'm up to the month of June. There is no way that I can take this and take a picture of it of the whole entire chart. Take just parts of the chart. Take a picture of just parts of the chart. So say you've got a big motif. I'll use Wendy's chart as an example. Say this was huge. Just take a picture of the very first motif. Once you get it done, now take a picture of say this part of the chart. You can still count down to make sure you're in the right area, you know, and then the next time you're done, if you get if you get this motif done, move over a little bit and take your next photo. So you're basically taking pictures 
of different areas of your chart as you go. That's what I do for a really, really large chart. So if you have any more questions or if you have any thoughts, let me know. This is super basic. Again, this app has lots of other features. Check them out, just play around. You can't, you can't mess anything up. Start with a chart if you wanna try a free chart or if you wanna try any chart actually. You can just press buttons, make marks, make mistakes on purpose, use that back arrow to go back and get rid of it and just play around with it. And I just use it for very, very basic stuff. Um, there's also a way, I was just going to mention, there's also a way to delete the chart. Like say for instance, I don't like this chart. I wanna get it out of my good notes. Let's see if I can show you, cause the angle, I have my little tripod. Let's see, I'm gonna pull up the chart again. Okay, so here I am, I'm working on the chart that I showed you just a few minutes ago. Go back out, take this little arrow here it's kind of hard to see because I only I'm only able to really use one arm since my surgery. Go back out. Okay, go back to this screen here. Okay, here's the chart right there, Wendy's chart. Say for instance you're looking at this and go, I really don't want this. I don't I don't want to stitch one of these. There is a little tiny arrow. I'm trying to get it to where the glare. Right, see where it says the name you can actually click the name and name it. So see right now the name is take photo. <laughs> you can name it. It's a little, oh, let's see if I can get it a better angle here. There we go. So you can actually click right here in that box and backspace. Okay. Oh, here, hold on. So click this box right here. If you want to name it, just go back. See how it's going back and erasing? Put love, love chart, whatever you want to name it, and then just click done. Okay, now same thing. Say for instance, you just you don't want to stitch it at all. There's a tiny arrow next to the word love. Click that tiny, tiny little arrow and it will say move to trash. Click move to trash and that chart is gone. It says, are you sure you want to do that? Yes, trash. Now it's gone. And you can just start with a new project again and take photo. So I hope that helps. I know that right now the camera angle, it would have been better if I showed you up close, but I think you get the idea. So this is how I use GoodNotes. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you on my next regular YouTube video, probably coming next week. Thanks, everybody.